see this rub where Niala's been bro broken this down. You can see how high up they get their horns there, and he just snapped it off. On the side over here, too. They come over here and they dig with their horns. They just come and they beat this area up. Well, we're in the zone, that's for sure. They're, They're here. obviously here, and the bulls are here, which is what we want. So. About six months out of the year, these areas up here in the Bali Mountains are covered in fog and a constant, constant 24 hours a day drizzle. And that huge amount of rainfall is what creates what we call the highland cloud forest. It's a very dense habitat that's absolutely perfect for the mountain niala. Where glassing is beautiful valley, little openings down there, you could just, in your mind, you could paint Mount Ninyala stepping into that. I was just sort of visualizing that when suddenly a, a radio call comes through. The guy at the lower spot saw a bull come out right below him. Jason just has a super excited look. We gotta go, we gotta go. He sees one down low, quick, let's go. It's a big one. We just go scrambling as fast as we can go down a trail because every second counts. He's a really, really nice bull. He was a beautiful bull standing right there at 250 yards. Old bull. Ooh. How cool is that? That's the first one I've ever seen in the wild. But you know, it's only day one right now. I'm so happy with how many tracks I've been seeing up here that I think we're going to pass on this guy. Um, I just felt it wasn't the right bull for us to take quite yet. so. You sure we're gonna pass on him, huh? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Are we sure? <laughs> I know. Trust me on this. You know, getting here, yes, it's Ethiopia, but it's not as outlandish as you think. Direct flight on Ethiopian Airways to Addis Ababa. Took a charter flight out of Ababa. is one long journey. And in many respects, I think it's just begun. And we're an hour and a half away to this camp. So it really was pretty seamless. And frankly, as you drive into this environment, looking at those giant fields and seeing the villages and seeing the people working the, the cattle and the sheep and everything else, I mean, it was just very, very pastoral. And then you climb and you climb and you emerge into the cloud forest. colobus monkeys and leopards and, and giant forest hogs. Just incredible to be in this environment. Oh, sweet home. So when you come here, you're really experiencing Africa for the first time in many different ways. We made it. What a cool camp in the forest here. Very different environment. Beautiful. We offer in Ethiopia a wide diversity. I think there's a 45 huntable species in Ethiopia. So as, as well as a lot of the more common species, we do have specialty animals. And our top, top tier specialty animal is the mountain yala. It's a species that's only found in Ethiopia. And in fact, it was only discovered to Western science in 1907. So it's one of the more recent species discovered in Africa. It's like top of the bull. Okay. Guns on, is the shooter. That's the question, right? Only about 20 are taken every year. So to come here and have the chance to hunt Mount Ninyala in this stunningly beautiful environment so far from home is absolutely a dream realized. I think the plan is to go do a little cruise around, see if we can spot. Yeah, we've, uh, we've had to put all four chains on our land cruiser because it's slick out there. Yep, see why you need chains. And this soil here just turns to glue and grease and... Jeez. And just between it all, we were really struggling. Um, the vehicle struggled. We actually ended up blowing a rear diff out and uh, just challenging in those conditions. Oh, if only he had a ram. If only he had a ram. <laughs> Hey, this is just life on safari, you know? There's a lot of miles between you and your mountain in Yala. 
you know, they don't complain. It's just part of being on safari. The rainy season is the rainy season. But I just found that this time of year, you know, as the rains taper off, the animals start moving. It's just a really good time. So I'm um, excited about the prospects of the next couple of days and what we're going to see. And what they do is they have these vast valleys that are known to really produce big bulls. And they've got these little sort of spots picked out on the, on the sides of these mountains, looking across the valley. And this is a great spot right here. I mean, you can see this whole yeah. bull pretty well. There's a bull, you see him down here. Right down here. That is him. Jeez. He's got a broken horn. That one horn is flipping enormous. He comes out like this and he just tips back, but the one side is broken off about four inches. Wowie. Damn it. Bad luck, that. Beauty. This is insane. Bright and early, here it is, day three. And we are heading back. There's a bull, you see him down here. Right down here. Yeah, I got him, got him. Nice looking bull, my goodness, I don't know. He flares at the top and everything. See, shooter. He's still got a little growing to do, this guy. He's in his prime, so. We're gonna be looking for a real nice older one, so another really tough decision here to pass on this one, but yeah, was a good grief. What a beautiful animal. It's an animal that 10 years ago, people said was on the brink of disappearing. And I mean, they're just all over now, a real conservation success story here. Jason's father, legendary African professional hunter, Nassos Russos, founded Ethiopian Rift Valley Safaris back in 1981. When Ethiopia shut down big game hunting in the early 1990s, it was Nassos Russo's persistence that finally convinced authorities to open their eyes. I love the wildlife and I want to save the wildlife. If we leave it like this, all the people will, I mean, the agriculture will take over. They don't care anymore about the wildlife. Today, Jason Russo's continues to follow in his father's legendary footsteps both as a professional hunter and as a champion of conservation and management, thanks to efforts spearheaded by these two men, mountain and yala populations in Ethiopia are thriving today. That's a serious broken horn one. Look at him, broken off at the base. That's a new one. It's amazing how beefy they get as they age. It's they incredible. do. incredible. You get those massive horns, the heavy horns, and just look at that body, and it's like a completely different animal. My lifelong quest to complete the spiral horn Grand Slam was within my grasp. This was my personal holy grail, and there is no one better to lead me on this final quest than the son of a legend, Jason Russos. You hear that? You hear that Colobus monkey? When they give this short call, <laughs> If they see a leopard, you hear that? There's a leopard right down here. He might be a little too good at those calls. I think Jason might actually be Tarzan. I think he grew up in the bush of Africa, and he, he knows this entire environment, which is great to hunt with a guy like that. And he's a graduate really? of Colorado State University in biology. The scientific name's Nifofia foliosa, and they're an endemic species only found in Ethiopia, this specific red hot poker. So the whole world here, this natural world, is sort of his, his playground, it's his study hall. I love that. I'm a biologist by training as well, so I love immersing myself, especially in such an exotic environment, and having somebody that can really tell me what's going on here, you know? All the, the diversity of the critters here, the plant life, and also the threats to this environment, the encroachment from, from humans, from cattle, and how they fought like hell to protect this forest. And it's really because of the mountain in Yala that this forest still exists. There's a big track right here. A lot of Yala tracks coming through here. Two days go by, three days go by, four days go by. Five days go by, six days go by, and not a day goes by that I didn't regret not shooting that bull on the first morning. Are you double sure? 
I was starting to sweat it, thinking, you know, I hope we didn't goof here and, and, and not shoot that Nyala on the first day. But we kept at it. Um, we kept positive. We went to a, a new area. I sent some guys to a, another area that we hadn't hunted in many years. It's a small valley, apparently. It's an area of concession we haven't seen. That's what we're up to this day. Maybe this is fine. We got set up. Soon as first light comes up, boom, get a radio call. From the guys five minutes away that said they saw some bulls. So we went zipping over there and I guess they saw a big one. We scramble, get up there. All of a sudden we could see one behind a giant tree. It's a young one. Yeah, you can see him right there just on the edge of that limb. He's a small one, but he said the other one's a bigger one. The other one's off to the left somewhere. Then we could see a nice bull. He's got a nice flare on him. This came out, deep curl turned out, right? Classic shape of a mountain in Yala. And we got set up, but he was just inside some thick cover, and, and you could just see his horns between the tree branches. It's covered in branches, but at least you can see yeah. them. I see them. Moved off, went out of sight. He says you can see him from over here. He's at the bendy tree. You gotta move over. OK, let's go. And we just tried to slide down so we can get a better angle to see behind that tree. As we get down there, the bull just starts walking out. There he is. You see him, Chris? He's below the other one? Walking to the right. Oh, yeah. And he's going, he's going, he's going. He's going. And unfortunately, he just kept going right through that clearing, and he never stopped. He running. We're crestfallen at that point. It's like, oh, God, if we just had five seconds. Jesus. We're all sitting there going, oh my lord. I mean, that was our bull right there. Man, we couldn't see him from there, too. Jeez, let's go. And I thought it was done. Uh, it was just such a disappointment because oh, that was our opportunity, a great opportunity. That was the bull we'd been looking for, old, beautiful shape. And so we just kind of went back to the original spot when we came over, sat there, just glassing around, just not even saying anything. It's one of those nobody could say anything. It was just an opportunity missed. Well, maybe he comes back out. What the hell? Now we don't have an option, we'll stay here, but yeah. He's got to do a 180, though. Yeah. Oh, my, that was bad luck. But, you know, and you, you get that doubt, and you start questioning yourself. That was the bull we wanted right there. And then all of a sudden, Jason says, they're back out. They came back again. No way. The same place, just above that bendy tree up there. Get on them fast. Oh, Perfect nice. opportunity, I mean, the good Lord smiled on us. That's all I can say. The big one is at the bottom, facing left. Okay, here we go. You hit him. Hit him again. You know, you want to see that animal just rear up and then just take off like a bat out of hell. And, oh, that's the break we needed, baby. Holy crap! Crap, we needed a break. Holy crap! What a miracle, huh? Oh my gosh! Relief, elation, emotion, disbelief, just all in one moment. Oh my. Gosh, what the hell? Dude, talk about the highs and lows of hunting and how it changes in like a second. <laughs> Years ago, when I was a younger man, I walked towards my first Inyala trophy, which put this long journey into motion in the first place. And now, as my feet float through the thick Ethiopian forest towards the finish line, I am taken back to other adventures that brought me here. Every member of the spiral horn family tree tells a story. Every amazing twisted horn is its own memory. And this was not a solo journey. Along the way, amazing guides and trackers helped put me in the right place at the right time. It feels fitting to complete this journey of mine by sharing this adventure with Jason and Nassos Russos, who through their combined efforts have helped preserve and protect the amazing mountain in Yala so that other hunters could follow in these same footsteps. Yeah, you can see it crash through all that vegetation. It's like a tank coming through here. We got him, huh? Here, give we me the got rifle. him. You go find. Go oh, see your Niala, my oh, friend. Oh, man. <laughs> what a beast. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. Look at the size of this guy. He just made a trail. It looks like a tornado came through here. There's your bull, Chris. <laughs> Now I can really Dude. give you a congrats, man. Dude, man, that was fantastic. Congrats. Oh, look at that. So awesome to hunt. Yeah, he's heavy, isn't he? All right, brother. You know, the emotions of, of, of how much effort we had put into this hunt um, and how concerned we were that we, you know, we were running out of time. 
Oh, it was well worth the wait. You know, and just seeing the body size of him. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. That's it. And just seeing the horn shape, it was just one of those things that that was the Niala that we'd been looking for all these days. And just a big sense of, of relief, a big sense of just accomplishment. And uh, just, you know, just very happy for the whole team, not just Chris, but everyone. Uh, that's the best feeling right there of the day. <laughs> well, Nid, Demi, 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 Nid. To, to take the mountain in Yala as the last of all the spiral horns in Africa, to end that, that quest with great hunting, great animals, great memories is, uh, you know, I could die a happy man. <laughs> That's probably enough, huh? Not that I want to die anytime soon.